as a technology company and as one of the largest companies in the world, we have responsibilities that go beyond just our own operations. We really have to think about what is our role in society? How are we affecting society both with the technology that we're providing, but also with the infrastructure we're building? So Microsoft has been acting on uh, our commitment to sustainability for a number of years. We started back in 2012 with a commitment to carbon neutrality across all of our operations. And as our cloud has grown, we've really started to think more deeply about the role of renewable energy uh, and how we're going to supply all of our operations with renewable, sustainable energy. Uh, and so that set us off on a journey to ultimately achieve 50% in, in 2018, 60% uh, this year in, in 2019 and ultimately towards a, a long-term goal of having 100% of our operations supplied by renewable energy. Recent research shows that the deployment of artificial intelligence technologies in just a few key sustainability areas, things like energy systems, transportation, and agriculture, have the ability to not only significantly decrease our overall greenhouse gas emissions, but also to lead to significant economic improvements by raising global GDP by over 4% and creating almost 40 million new jobs. AI for Earth is a five-year, $50 million investment with the ambition to fundamentally change the way that human societies monitor, model, and ultimately manage Earth's natural systems. We started two years ago with nothing. We now have well over 450 grantees working in more than 70 countries around the world. We're not just putting tools in the hands of people who don't know how to use them, and so we build up educational programs acknowledging that Microsoft itself has a lot of engineering and machine learning expertise and putting our teams in the same room to code hand in hand with grantees all around the world. Most people when they picture the cloud, they kind of picture their laptop or their, their phone or whatever, just sort of connecting to the, to the air. But actually what's happening is those computers are connecting uh, to, to all these servers I have in the background. And these are just other computers, but they're specialized computers to be able to give you the data that you need to make sure your pictures are available, your email, all that kind of stuff. These computers consume energy and they generate heat. So we put these computers in large buildings called data centers. Data centers are really special because they're designed to make sure that the power is always available to the servers. There's redundancies built in, so if there isn't a problem with one computer, if it goes down, the network will automatically transfer to another computer, and you don't even notice it. So when we learned about fuel cells, we saw an opportunity to really significantly simplify the data center to cut out all of those points of failure. We think that fuel cells offer a very unique place in terms of energy storage, which is crucial for balancing renewable energy. When the wind dies down, when the sun's not available, you have to store all that energy. Uh, and that's a very promising future that I think fuel cells could fit. So we're able to use our own technology, AI, machine learning, as we think about both the design and the operation of the data center. Um, and that really is one of the the key benefits that data provides to us is that uh, it is a tool that is actually useful for driving efficiencies, not just across how data centers operate, but how cities operate, how uh, farms and agriculture systems operate. So uh, as we think about our impact on society, it goes far beyond what we just do in our own operations to how our customers are able to leverage our technology to drive efficiency across a wide number of sectors. The world has a food problem. The world's food production needs to increase by 70% compared to 2010 levels to feed the growing population of the world. The thing is, it's not just about feeding the world. You need to give the people good food, nutritious food, and you need to get to the significant food production without harming the planet. And the most promising approach right now is that of data-driven agriculture. A lot of the decisions that the farmers take is based on guesswork, like when to sow, when to water, when to fertilize, how much to fertilize, where to fertilize. The goal of Farm Beats is to enable data-driven agriculture. That is, we want to take guesswork out of farmers' life. We do two key things. One, we've come up with new ways to gather large amounts of data from the farm at low cost. And the second thing we do is once you get the data from the farm, from sensors and drones, we combine them with other data streams, for example, with satellites and weather stations using AI techniques 
to come up with new insights for farmers. If you're doing precision agriculture, it will help a farmer be more productive. That is, they can take care of plants better if they know what the farm looks like. It can help them reduce costs because they would use less water, less pesticide, less fertilizer. It's also better for the environment for the same reason. That's the goal and that's where we think technology can help solve this agriculture problem through this technique which we are calling data-driven agriculture. We really have to look at data on two different factors. One is, how is that data going to be used? And is it going to be used in an ethical way? Things like facial recognition technology. And then how is it going to be produced? And is it produced in a way uh, that doesn't offset the benefits that it creates? As a material designer, it's it's a little uh, easier for me to look at sustainability through materials. So sustainability allows us now to bring in that aspect of what's the end of life of the product now. And we start asking ourselves more questions. What does circularity mean to us? What happens to these materials and can we recover them? How do we keep our product longer life? How do we reuse materials? How do we repurpose components? Those are the things now that we start using as mindset to design the product. We create these things. These things are not made from nature per se, right? They, they don't have the, the life cycle of a natural product of a plant, right? So we have to take on that responsibility from day one when we design this all the way to the end of life or reuse of this product. Technology industry is always evolving and the next evolution uh, will probably be something that surprises us. Uh, what we're really thinking about is how do we build that foundational infrastructure for the future uh, with our data center operations across the globe that will enable that next wave of innovation by bringing data uh, to the masses, by making available to everyone uh, the opportunity to leverage data, to leverage machine learning and AI uh, to create the products of the future.